welcome back so in this last part we will discuss about uh, this pattern divergent or convergent or parallel pattern of these dip isogons which we have already studied and how does it vary across different classes uh, of fold uh, of folds class 1a 1b uh, 1c 2 and class 3 uh, in addition, we'll also try to relate it with uh, an intuitive concept that we have learned previously that is related to curvature and we have used the size of the circle as a proxy to the curvature in which this radius of the circle is inversely proportional to curvature. So, this bigger circle that I have here has more curvature, uh, sorry, less curvature compared to this smaller circle. Now, this figure you would have already seen many times if you have studied like uh, basic structural geology. So, class 1a you have this strongly convergent pattern of dip isogons and when we are defining this convergent or divergent what we do is we look we go from the outer surface or the one which is on the top and the one which is in the bottom. So, this is on the top is inner and on the bottom will say also oh, on the top it is outer and on the bottom will say it's inner. So, as you go from this outer or top surface to this inner surface the dip isogons are converging so that is why these arrows are marked in the from out to inward direction and it shows this strongly convergent pattern similarly for class 1b all these dip isogons they are perpendicular to these fault surfaces and again they are convergent class 1c they are still convergent but they are weakly convergent and you see you see this direction they are slightly pointing upwards in class uh, in class 1a whereas class 1b and 1c they are pointing slightly downwards. Another thing that you will notice for all the folds that belong to class 1a whether they are one uh, class 1 whether they are 1a, 1b or 1c so all folds belonging to class 1 they have this outer curvature which is greater than inner curvature so for all these so that is why you may like be wondering why 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 don't we make this as a separate class why do we club like this why can't we club this two 3 and 1 together because they are they all have uh, this t prime alpha thickness which is less than 1 but we actually classify them all as work belonging to class 1 because of this convergent pattern of dip isogons as well as uh, this outer curvature being greater than inner curvature and which we will also see when we study these circles and we have seen that in previous videos. So coming to class 2 so you see here all the dip isogons are parallel to this axial plane so this is your axial plane if you orient this axial plane vertically uh, we make our fold upright so all these dip isogons they are pointing vertically downward because they are pointing in the same direction they are neither converging and nor diverging and for class 3 we'll see we have this divergent pattern we don't have a convergent pattern in the sense that as we move from this outer to inner fold surface these dip isogons they are moving away from one another so that is why we have this separate class and this class has peculiar feature in that outer curvature is actually less than inner curvature so the circle that you have on outside sort of like seems strange it has more curvature means it has smaller radius and in the class 2 we have outer curvature equal to inner curvature so that is why these are also known as similar folds and this could be like one confusing point because dip isogons are parallel but do not confuse this like don't say that class 2 folds are parallel folds they are similar folds they are not parallel we call we don't call them parallel because you see this outer surface and inner surface they are not parallel the thickness is varying it is becoming thinner towards the limbs and it is thicker towards the hinge we call class 1b as parallel because the thickness is constant everywhere and this this uh, outer surface and inner, inner surface they appear parallel to one another so that is why this is parallel fold so but dip isogons are parallel in class 2 and they are parallel to the axial plane now we will try to understand this dip isogon patterns based on this concept of bigger circle and smaller circle that we have already studied and what I am going to do is uh, I am going to define this point here so I am going to find two points of same alpha and it is very easy to find that points of 2 alpha for example if I am on this bigger circle I can find where alpha becomes 90 degrees so I move 90 degree in this direction so at this point my alpha becomes 90 degree so it is 90 degree to this horizontal line so I find these points for both these circles so I find this one for the inner circle and outer circle and then I'll 
join a line from outer to inner circle and this line will point something like this similarly i can get it at diametrically opposite points and they will point you see inward so they are you see just going from outer to inward so they are going from down towards upward side and they are converging so this is sort of pattern that i see in this case in second case it is very easy because they are concentric so so they will have these isogons which are pointing directly towards the center and you can actually draw other dip isogons also just like this because these are concentric circles so these are these again as you go from outer to inner they are converging in this case finally uh, this final case of class so again class 1a 1b and moving to class 1c you'll see that pattern here is converging too so again i draw this t alpha for 90 degree at these points and then you draw these from outer to inner and you see they are both converging so this is again convergent pattern now you'll see how we get this uh, parallel pattern here so again i'm going to draw this t alpha at 90 degree you see it's vertically down and this is true actually for every other point because what we do in this case we are actually just shifting the same circle downward so we are having two circles of same radius one is up one is at the bottom and they have same they have same radius and you can draw like others also from these points so this will be alpha similarly this one here will also be alpha so all these so and similarly here the one that you see here this will be alpha so these are the ones on the bottom circle okay so all these deep isogons will point vertically down finally come to this so this is the only case so this was class sorry two and this here will be class three and you'll see that class three is the so you'll see that class three is the only class where we'll see this divergent pattern and you can see that from here so if you draw this t alpha equals to 90 degree for both these circles you see oh okay sorry i'll have to go from outer to inner part so this is on top is outer we are assuming so this top part is outer so you see this arrow is actually pointing downwards and they are moving away from each other so again this is very intuitive and an easy way to remember the divergent and convergent pattern if you have to draw an exam you draw this part but if you have to memorize these things it is an easier way to understand because we are sort of like drawing this outer curvature we are comparing outer curvature and inner curvature only in this case outer curvature is more than inner curvature in the sense that outer circle is smaller than inner circle so here you, you don't call it like inner but it's like at the at the bottom and if you look at the fold if, or, or not the fold fold so this will be the outer limb and this part here underneath so because this will not be included as part of fold they cannot intersect and so this will be this inner portion so that is why we call it inner even though it doesn't seem inner in this case so a nice way to remember this convergent and divergent patterns of folds and that is why we divide them into these different classes so three points that you should remember in this part and which can be a little confusing the first and the foremost class 1a class 1b class 1c the t prime alpha is actually different 1a is the only class out of all classes 1b 1c in which this t prime alpha is greater than 1 in the sense that this hinge thickness is smaller than the limb thickness for all other cases hinge thickness is more than the limb thickness so that is one point that you have to remember second dip isogons are parallel for class 2 but they are not called parallel folds they are called similar folds class 1b is the parallel fold so this is parallel and class 2 is similar and it's called similar because outer circle and this inner circle they are both of same radius so that is why they are called similar outer surface and inner circle they have same shape so they, they are called similar folds and the third one only in class 3 you see divergent pattern in class 2 you see parallel pattern so just remember these points and with this we finish uh, like most of this ramses fold classification and maybe uh, you can, we will share some uh, real examples of these different kinds of folds and under what conditions uh, these folds 
this false form that is for another video so thank you for joining me today in this lecture if you are brand new to your youtube channel please subscribe and hit the bell icon to receive latest updates we have also been running uh, uh, a free course in structural geology we are dealing with basics of structural geology as well as mapping pattern of different folds and if you are not aware of that course please uh, please please click on the link that is given in the description that will take you to the course website where you can register and also fill up an online form and then you will be registered for the course and we are actually planning to launch further courses uh, some of them could be would be paid some of them can be free uh, and we also have uh, previous, previously released some courses for example there are courses in numerical for numerical problems and there is one course in remote sensing so please do check those courses out again thank you very much for joining me in this lecture